Twitch. <laughs> Try it again. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Welcome back. So today we're going to be talking about angles of elevation and angles of depression. That's not being sad, okay? We'll talk about those definitions here in a moment. There's nothing different here than we haven't already done. It's going to use right triangles. It's going to use trigonometry. It's going to use angle measures and sine, cosine, tangent, all that good stuff, hypotenuse, all of those things. But the angles are going to get special names because now we're talking about real world problems. And when our real world problem deals with looking up at something, the angle that you look up at is the angle of elevation. <clears throat> and it's the angle between your line of sight looking up and the horizontal of you looking straight forward at the object. <coughs> And a horizontal, horizontal to the object. Okay? So the angle between looking straight forward and you tilting your head back to look up at Superman flying in the sky, that's your angle of elevation. <coughs> we are going to use the Greek letter theta, which looks like a zero that you've put a very loose belt on didn't pull the belt tight to turn the zero into an eight. This is theta. Pronounced like that. Theta. So, and that, that's going to be our go-to variable whenever we're dealing with angle measures. So if I've got an angle, I'm not gonna ask you for a variable for it. I'm just gonna use theta, okay? And this theta is gonna get used basically for the rest of your life for angles. As the go-to. They may put other variables in there, but that's kind of the main general one. The opposite of looking up is looking down. And so the name of the angle when you were looking down at something is the angle of depression. <clears throat> Again, this doesn't mean sad. This means down. Those of you who are taller than me, there's an angle of depression when you look down at me. When you walk through the door saying good afternoon. And once again, it, this is the angle between the horizontal and you having to dip your head to look down at something. Angles of elevation and depression are fantastic because you can use these between two different objects to get an idea of the distance between those objects. <clears throat> and the angles from two different positions of observation to the same object will help you estimate how tall that object is, the height of that object. Okay, So you can use angles of elevation, depression, do all sorts of cool things. Let's work through these. All of the rest of the examples on here are going to be word problems. Okay, So uh, you're, you're going to counter physics soon, I think many of you. So hi. Here we go. This is physics stuff. Ah, I'm going to cry. Okay. The angle of elevation. Am I looking up or looking down? Uh, up. Uh, angle of elevation. The angle of elevation from point A to the top of a hill is 49 degrees. Okay, I need a picture because I'm already lost. Okay, so there's my hill. <coughs> it's a beautiful hill. There's some point that's not on the hill. Point A. And then the angle that gets made, theta, looking up at the top of the hill, barely Sorry, brushing. How, how is that? How is theta drawn? It's like a zero with a line through it, a horizontal line, like you've drawn a belt on it. Okay. But don't. I saw that in our assignment. Yeah. Yeah, and you're like, what the? Mm, is it? Yeah, it's just a variable for angle measure, and it's theta. And I didn't say that yesterday, and I'm sorry. I'm saying it now. Hi, there's theta. Angle measure. Okay. Um, if this point A is 400 feet from the base of the hill, how high is the hill? High, another word for high is the altitude, and so we are going to draw an altitude from the hill to the base of the hill. And now we have a right triangle. So 
Can we ignore the fact that this was a hill to begin with and just deal with right triangles? We want to know the height of the hill. So can I have your favorite variable for the height? Yes. All right. And the measure of that angle is 49 degrees. So which trick function? Um, we just have to add them together. <coughs> you got one side and you got... What you got? Altitude. No, you got the height. You don't... You, what? You got the height. Do I have the hypotenuse? No. No. Okay, so if I'm looking at my trig function memorization oh, chart... I cannot use sine because it needs hypotenuse. I cannot use cosine because it needs hypotenuse. The only one I can use is? Tangent. Thank you. Tangent. Y'all, if you were looking down in writing, you totally missed me giving them the, you know, sad teacher face of, really? It's not tan. It's tangent. She has a tan. We're using tangent. Okay. So I'm going to write tangent uh, of 49 equals side opposite the angle divided by the side adjacent to the angle. And now I can ignore the picture and focus on the algebra. <coughs> I need to solve for x, which means I need x all by itself on one side of the equal sign, everything else on the other side. What do I need to get rid of? The 400. How do I get rid of the 400? By what? Okay, so I'm hearing two different things, and both of you are correct. So let's address both of them. One of them was just bring the 400 to the other side, undo the division with multiplication, and you're done. He said, put this tangent of 49 over 1, then I have a fraction equal fraction, and I can cross multiply. You're both correct. Both ways are valid. Both get you to the same place. Which version do you want to see me work out? The, the multiply by 400? In this case, I agree because one side doesn't already look like a fraction. And so the multiply by 100 or multiply by the denominator just feels simpler. Yeah. Okay. But you do have the option to put it over 1 and cross multiply if you want. <clears throat> All right. So 400 tangent 49 equals x. And so to figure out how tall the hill is, we're going to ask a superhero. 19,600. I need to know what you typed because that seems weird. It does. He's getting 460. What did you type? What did you do? You cannot multiply those two together. The 49 is tucked inside of whatever tangent does. So you have to do 400 times and then tangent 49. Because when you're in your calculator and you push, push your trig function, notice how tangent has parentheses? The 49 is inside of there. And the 400 is sitting outside. I can't distribute into the 49 because tangent is doing something first. Tangent is doing, I don't know, whatever it needs to do to turn 49 into that one point. Something. And then that times 100, 400. Okay. Okay? So 400, open the trig menu, select tangent, put in your angle measure. Okay. You can't multiply in and then take tangent. <coughs> Good. Thank you for, for helping us think through that because that is a very, very common error that we see a lot. And as you saw, it creates two different but valid looking answers. And so it's hard to tell which one's the right one. Good. You said it was 460, right? Yes? Okay. This is a word problem. Your physics are word problems. This is real world. So we need not just number answer. We need full sentence answers. The question we are being asked to find the answer to is how high is the hill? So give me a full sentence answer to how high is the hill? The high, the high, the hill, the hill is 460 feet. The, the height of the hill is 460 or the hill is 460 feet high or tall or yeah. So just give me a full sentence here. The hill 
is alive. And 460 feet tall. <coughs> and that's our final answer. Another. 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 We're going to summon Thor and throw the coffee mug onto the floor. Another. Find the angle of elevation. Pause. Am I looking up or am I looking down? Up. Elevation is up. Find the angle of elevation of the sun when a 12.5 meter tall telephone pole casts an 18 meter long shadow. They've already drawn a figure for me, which is oh so helpful. I don't have to draw it myself. So I'm going to go ahead and colorize this thing. All right, here is my figure. Here is my sun. And the sun is casting rays and shining all over the place. And one of the rays is striking the very top of the telephone pole and it's causing this 18 meter long shadow. Now I put my head right here at the very edge of the shadow and I want to know at what angle I have to look up at, angle of elevation, to look directly at the top of that telephone pole. Okay, and that's this angle, theta. Right triangle, which trig function? Uh, tan. <coughs> tangent. Tangent. Teamwork. I said tangent. Oh, I heard tan. I was like, and then he filled in. Tangent. Because there's no hypotenuse. Tangent. Because we don't have a hypotenuse. All right, so the tangent of theta equals 12.5 over 18. I need to undo tangent to get rid of tangent so that it leaves theta by itself, what arc. should I do? Arc tan or the inverse tangent. So that is written this way. And so you'll find the option that looks like that. Um, wait, why is this coming from the other one if we have the same We're using the same trig function, but it looks different than the first one because in the first one we were looking for one of the links of the side of the triangle, and this time we're looking for the measure of the angle. And so if you're looking for an angle, you need to... You're going to have to... Undo the tan, undo whatever. Tan yes. If you're looking for a side, you need to keep it... You keep it normal. Um, is, is tan <coughs> multiplying the angle so when you divide by tan? Great question, because it looks here like you're multiplying tangent in the angle measure. The short answer is no, because tangent isn't actually a number. Tangent is do something. I don't know what something is. Like, I can't tell you, oh, add this number, divide by this, take the square root of... I have no idea what tangent is doing. But whatever tangent is doing, it's doing it to this value. And because this is an operation, like addition, like subtraction, like square roots, I have to use another operation, it's inverse, to undo it. I have to use another function to undo it. And the name of the function that undoes the tangent is the inverse tangent or the arc tangent, and it's written this way. Which is what you'll find when you go into your superhero and ask, Hey, what what is what is this? So I'm gonna look for, I'm gonna go to my trig menu and I'm gonna look for the one that has the negative one that is the inverse tangent, select it, and then put whatever is in the parentheses. And I'm doing that because I need to undo tangent to get to the angle measure. <coughs> okay, we'll do thirty four point eight because we had three significant figures in one of our side links, and so we'll put our answer to three significant figures. And now we need to write our sentence because this is a real world problem. The elevation. Angle of elevation. The angle of elevation of the sun is 34.8 degrees. Beautiful. The angle of elevation of the sun is 34.8 degrees. I'll try to catch up with you. I can't write that way. Ta-da!
Lisa. <clears throat> Another. Yes. Yeah. All right, looking at number three on the back. Oh, we have the yes. A ski run is, do you know what a ski run is? They race with the skis. Yeah, it's where they race with the skis. So you've got this dude in the whole ski thing, which means he's got like popsicle sticks glued to his feet and toothpicks in his hands. And he's at the top of the hill and the ski run is the path going down the hill where he's got to try to avoid smacking into a tree and dying. That's a ski run. I clearly find this very scary and I never want to do it. But if you want to do it, that's cool. So this is the ski run. If I zoom in on the picture here, you see the little guy crouched down, ready to go with his toothpick in his hand and his little skis on his feet. And he's about to zoom down this side of the mountain or the hill. That's the ski run. It's a thousand yards long. I'm going to put that in perspective. Football field is 100 yards long. Okay. That's 10 football fields that he's going to be sliding down. Okay. It has a vertical drop. That means that if by some magic we remove the mountain he was on, our skier is going to fall straight down at, for 208 yards and then go splat. Okay? So it has a vertical drop of 208 yards. That's how high up he is. <clears throat> Find the angle of depression. Okay, we looking up or we looking down? Down. So find the angle of depression going down from the top of the ski run. So this vertical line would be the top to the bottom of the ski run right here. Now, his vertical drop is 208. That means when he's at the bottom of the hill, the bottom of the ski run, his position would have changed vertically by 208 yards. What shape did we just create right here? A rectangle. That's why those two things are equal. Right? Right angle over there. Okay, so I'm going to ignore this angle down here. I'm going to look at this angle here. Because this is the angle of depression, so that's theta, and I want the measure of theta. What sides do I have information on? You have the hypotenuse. I have the hypotenuse and? Um, you have the, oh, you have the, yeah. It's the opposite? Yeah, it's the opposite. Because the adjacent would be this one. If we were doing the other triangle, it would have been the oh, adjacent. Okay. okay. His comment was, if we were doing this other angle, we'd be working with the adjacent. And the short answer is, well, sure, this would be the adjacent, this would be it, but you wouldn't, this wouldn't be the angle of depression. It would be the angle of elevation. It's not the angle of elevation. Angle of elevation is from the horizontal. This is from the vertical. This is something else I don't have a name for. It's just another angle. It's just another angle, but I know that this angle plus the angle of depression has to be the corner of 90. So if I had found that one, which you could have, I would have to have subtracted that amount from 90 to get the actual angle of depression, which adds an extra step and why, because why do I have the extra work, okay? Don't, lazy, let's easy way out, yeah? All right, so opposite hypotenuse, which trig function is that? Uh, sine. Sine, 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 everywhere it's sine. Use an opposite and hypotenuse. Hypotenuse, so this still didn't work. Sine of theta equals opposite 208 over 1,000, which is my hypotenuse. Oh, put the theta. That's the only variable in this thing. Well, we can do the arc yeah. sine. Arc sine. Exactly. We want to undo the trig function of sine, so we're going to use its opposite its inverse which is also called the arc sign and so when we go into our superhero calculator we'll type that 78 yeah. wait no I'm sorry okay um, 16.26 16 point let's get that confirmed 16.3 is what he's saying 
Confirm. I got someone getting 12. 12 also. Sign in verse. And 12, I heard someone else call out 12, and then I got someone nodding for 12. Someone else nodding for 12. Okay, so yeah. double check that you're using sign in verse. Yeah. That you're using 208 over 1000 mm -hmm. inside. And then double check to make sure your hero is in the right mode. Yeah, it's How do you change that again? Okay, great question. How do you change that? If you were in the scratch pad, which looks like this, it's right. going to say scratch pad in the top. What you want to do is go to the dock button, which is right here. And then down to settings and status. And then to document settings. And change angle to degree, make default. Uh -huh. And it still did weirdness. And it's still showing, even if you do it again? It's still showing 16 something. Weird. I think the flash. Is think the flash. You know what? He might be in flashpoint, like a weird time. Uh, ha. Okay, so go ahead and reset him to try to bring him back into our continuity, please, and see if if that works. You maybe he's reverse flash. All right, so we're gonna go with twelve because that's what most people in the room got. Okay. 12 degrees, and we need to put this in a complete sentence. The, from the, top of the, the angle of depression, because we don't, otherwise it sounds like you're saying that the ski run is depressed. Degrees, it's an angle. Degrees? Yeah, it's an angle measure. Angle measure is always in degrees. Oops. It's okay. The angle of depression from the top of the ski run to the bottom is 12 degrees. I think if anyone is watching this video and is from a place where they have actual ski runs, I think that ski runs have the angle of depression listed. And I think so that you know um, how steep the angle is because check this out. Okay, I had this is my diagram for an angle of 12, right? Well, what if I increase the angle and make this angle bigger? It's steeper. It's steeper, which means you're going to go faster, which means I'm going to die. So I think, and again, please research, leave a comment. And let me know if they actually, on ski runs, put the angle of depression. Because if so, that would be cool. All right. I don't think anyone's going to be watching this thing because Break, look. <laughs> Suspension of reality on my part that I'm popular enough to be watched. Okay. Let's go on to the next one. I'm getting depressed. Oh. <laughs> but I'm cheating. Um, from the top of a 120-foot <laughs> high tower... An air traffic controller observes an airplane on the runway. What's an air traffic controller? The people that tell you where uh, the place to like go. Yeah, that's the side seat driver for the airplanes at the airport. But they're sitting on a tower. They're not sitting in the cockpit with the uh, pilot. And they're looking down at all the airplanes going, uh, excuse me, Air in American Airlines Flight 14, you're about to crash into Delta. Please don't do that. That would be bad. Yeah, so that's the air traffic controller. He's up in a tower. He's looking down. And he spots this one airplane. And he has his emergency protractor with him because he's a nerd like me. And he measures his angle of depression, how far he drops his head to look down at the airplane. He realizes it's 19 degrees. And because he's a crazy nerd like me, he's going to use that to figure out how far away his airplane is. So he can tell the airplane, you're too close to the tower. Go away. Okay. Let's figure it out. Here's our airplane. Here is the point at which he is spotting the airplane. Here's the horizontal. And so we create this right angle right here. Is a rectangle. So this is also 120 feet. And these two are the same. And so if I can find that measurement, 
which is supposed to look like a question mark, but I failed. You're looking for a side. We're looking for a side. All right, I need a variable for the side. Uh, I heard y, which we haven't used a lot of. So let's go ahead and use y today. If you really need to use x because y is like going to hurt your heart, then yeah. please go ahead and use x on your paper. It's fine. I'm going to use y because that was the first letter I heard called out. All right, here is our angle right here. So which sides do we have? I definitely have the opposite right here. The hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle, so this is the hypotenuse. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. That's all we have. Oh, we have the an angle. We actually have information on the adjacent. Now, it looks like we don't have information on the adjacent because that's what, what we want to find, mm -hmm. but that's information. Whereas the hypotenuse, we have absolutely nothing. We don't even know if we want to find it or not. So we have no information on that side. Whereas we have information on this because we're asked to find that. Make sense? Sure. Yeah, for purposes, it's Okay. So which sides do we have information on? We definitely have the opposite. So we're going to use tangent because we have opposite and adjacent. All right, so I'm going to write those down over here. I have the tangent of the measure of my angle is 19 equals the side opposite to that angle divided by the side adjacent to that angle. I want y by itself. y is currently sitting in an equation with a fraction. I'm getting hives because there's a fraction. How do you get rid of fractions in an equation? Multiply by the denominator. The denominator is y, like the letter y, not give me the reason why. So y tangent of 19, because that's what we have, equals 120. I want y by itself, but I have tangent in the way. How do I get rid of tangent 19? Okay. The comment that I got back was arctangent of 19. The thing is, is arctangent is used to peel away tangent from the measure of the angle. I have a measure of the angle. I don't have a variable. So I don't have the need to peel away the trig function from the measure of the angle. Because I have a measure of the angle that I can just apply the trig function to. And it turns into a number. So I really am trying to get rid of the tangent of 19. What's happening between the variable that I'm looking for, y, and the tangent of 19? No idea. What's happening right in here? What did we do to get to this point? What's happening right here? Multiplication. multiplication. So how do you undo multiplication? <coughs> what? Remember that tangent of 19 is a little group? Tangent is only 19. And because 19 is an actual number, unlike, unlike this one, where it was a variable, and I had no idea what the number was, and I wanted to know, and I had to peel off the trig function, that's when I use the inverse, when I have to peel off the trig function to get to the value that's hold, being held inside of it. Here, I have a number. I know what the number is that's inside the trig function. I don't have a need to peel that trig function off in order to figure out the number. I already know the number. So I'm going to leave the trig function there and say, it's just a number. You don't believe me? It's a number. Go to your, look, come here. Look, it's a number. I swear to you. It's a gross number that I don't ever want to think about or remember ever again in my life. So I just want to write Tangent of 19, because that's way easier to deal with. At least same. Because otherwise I'd have to say, y times 0 0.34, I'm already annoyed. Tangent 19, okay? These cancel. y equals whatever I get from my calculator when I divide 120 by the tangent of 19.
is blurry. Where's my focus button? It's still blurry. I need someone to call that out because that's blurry. Yeah, push, yeah, push the button. Don't just stare at my screen. Three forty-eight point five. Three forty-eight point five. This is a real-world problem given to us in words, so we should give answers in full sentence words. Okay. No, he yawned. He's done. The base. No, I don't even know. What's the question we're trying to answer? How far from the base of the tower airplane? Okay. So. How far away is the airplane from the base of the tower? Yeah, and you're, it's sounding weird to you, right? Like the base is what? The airplane is this far from the base of the tower. Yeah. So that's our sentence. So the airplane is 348.5 feet? Uh, yep. From the base of the tower. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yep. I, I am not doing well with writing today. I think I have so many typos in that sentence. <laughs> oh, what is life? Okay, hang on. I have a misspelling here. I have a misspelling here. Do I have feet? I spelled feet wrong? Oh, wait, no, it's two E's. Okay, it is two E's. No, that, that would be feet like a feet of strength. Yeah. This is like feet that you walk on. So feet that you walk on two E's because your feet look kind of the same. And a feet is something you do like I'm super strong feet of strength. Or featuring like an interview video. Or yeah, like you're featuring. Yeah. But that would that's not feet, that's feature. But shorten. If I put a period after the T, then I suppose, okay. We're, I think we've gotten way off of time. Hi, welcome to English class with, um, yeah. Okay, we'll save these other two for tomorrow and use those to warm ourselves up. So that way you at least have some time to work on stuff today. Oh. Thank you.